black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Today's subscriber sponsored request coming in frigid, not hot, frigid from Steffi B in New York. Long time viewer, long time subscriber. She's looking for some XL big old burritos. And in the interest of time, I went ahead and prepped everything because I'm a little bit strapped today, but we got it all. We got the meat, we got the seasoning, we got the hot sauce, we got the taco sauce, we got our shredded cheese, we got pickled onions, we got lettuce, we got Fritos, we got tomatoes, we got onion, we got pipe sour cream, we got refried beans, and we got cheese whiz. So we got it all. So we're gonna fry up this beef with these onions, get the seasoning in there. And then Steph is requiring from me a deep talk video. Whatever's on my mind, whatever I've been thinking about, just as long as it goes deep, you know what I mean? So let's get these tossed together and get to eating and thinking deeply. Okay, first things first for this beef, I do feel inclined to give it a chop. Don't ask me why, I just do. But uh, what does this come up to? I think like just over, I don't know, Two pounds, not, not quite two pounds, almost. But before we get it in the pan, I just wanna make it, you know, a little more crumbly for the pan. All right, medium flame, pan on, a little hit of butter. Onions in. All right, go ahead and sweat these out a little bit before we get the meat in there. Okay, meat goes in. All right, let's let that go for a little bit. All right, in with the taco mix. All right, this is smelling delicious, I could say that. Use the old uh, pastry thing for a little meat breakdown. Why not? Use what you got, any tool that does the job good and gets things done for you. Doesn't have to be for its intended use, does it? All right, good on that. All right, let's go ahead and twist up these two big old burritos that I have in my noggin. So we got the XL, pretty big uh, tortilla boys. Very hard to find, took me a little while to locate, but we got them. First burrito I'm making is, I want a little more simplicity style. A little more bean, cheese, meat type style. A little rice in there too. Just gonna lay out some refried beans on the bottom here for some stickiness some brown chicken flavored rice here that i'm going to lay into the sticky adhesive of the beans next i'm going to do a light little cheese drizzle okay maybe not that light a whole cheese drizzle after that we got our beef Good amount of beef. More cheese drizzle. Want some pickled shallots for a little vinegar cut. Next we got the Fritos Ringolos hitting the floor. Fritos Ringolos for some crunch. Corn chip barbecue flavor. And then I also want a sprinkle of some real cheese, some shreddy cheddy. Top that off with sour cream, some taco sauce. Here comes the hard part, the roll. Are we ready to roll? Here we go. Sides in, flap up and over, quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh, the hand is covered. Tuck them in, tuck them in. Okay, slide to the side. Clean up on aisle three. Renegotiate corners. Bring in the next one. Move this over. For this one, more of a Supreme style. Just a little cheese. 
for some adhesive. A little sour cream. Spread that around. The beef. Real cheese. Ring of Lowe's. More sour cream. Tomato a plenty. Rest of these shallots. Lots of shredded lettuce. Can we wrap this? This one has a less saucy, aggressive nature. Tuck it in, tuck it in, fold her in. Tuck it in, tuck it in. Fold her in. This one's going a little better. Definitely a little tighter. Less leaks probably we'll have on this one. Okay, big beefy burrito. Now we have to toast these and seal them. So what I'll do then is is bring this side of the burrito together, and we do an oil brush, a little oil brush bath. there run away take it to the pan a nice little medium low seal side down a little press seal side down a little press together we will flip these eventually so another brushing of oil on this side and patiently we wait for them to seal all right, a couple little minutes in here. Let's see if we're at a nice golden little seal shimmer. Ooh, -wee! that's when you know it's right. Uh oh, maybe not. Come on, there we go. Let go, just let go, and it's perfect. And they're perfect. And we let those go on that side just a minute or two. Cause they're perfect when they're perfect. You know what we do. Okay, coming over here, looking amazing. Seal side down. Seal side down. I'm actually just gonna let these set up for about a minute or two. Well, you know, two, three minutes kind of deal. And then we're gonna cut them open, center reveal, get them on our board and then we're gonna go eat okay so I have these on their own ass cutting board and I want to cut into these and see what we're working with in the middle go ahead and move you to the side sir this is the supreme I'm gonna go directly across we're not doing diagonals today and we commit quickly and we reveal perfect center cross-section big supreme burrito amazing please move back sir the meat bean and cheese rice all them things same tactic quick surgical across and a reveal of the more simplified Meat, bean, and cheese. Barret. Amazing. Let's get these situated on our board. So we can get a proper thumbnail when we sit down to eat, but there, there it is. This is for you, Steph B. Two big old burritos, two different styles. Cannot wait to eat this. Let's go. All right, yo, what up and welcome to today's subscriber sponsor request coming in from Steph B. Her and I have had some chats in the Instagram. 
She uh, she likes to go deep down the rabbit hole like I do, question everything, don't believe what you're told, you know, delete the programming and think deeper into maybe the simulation, is it real, isn't it real, life after death, the fact that we live in a puzzle and a mystery and don't know anything, seemingly via the matrix society we're constantly lied to type things, you know, mind manipulation, programming, the whole nine. Now... Uh, I like to think like that quite a bit, um, and so she was like, make some big ass burritos, and then just expand upon something that's been in your mind. Now, it doesn't have to be the most craziest rabbit hole thing ever, but just whatever's been playing on your mind, and I've always thought about, like, death and life, and life after death, and, and, you know, death as seemingly, like, a terrifying, weird thing that's just as, like, we have to do it because we came from it right like so you've already kind of been dead once but uh and you'll be dead again sort of thing but anyways i have maybe a bit of an original thought i'm going to expand upon today uh i'm certainly there's holes in the theory and flaws in it all but uh it's been tickling my mind for a while and i've never expressed it openly to anyone honestly so uh with that being said i'm going to get into that but before we do anything more we must pour and of course, with our, you know, Taco Bell-esque type items, we got to bring in the Baja Blast, okay? So we have Skidoo Sender. I'm so impressed that these stickers, these are dollar store stickers. They have lasted wash after wash after wash. The adhesive on these stickers is incredible, to be honest with you. It's insane. Um, also, as you can see on the side, I just brought some hot sauce. I got some taco sauce, maybe for some bite additives. And then I have this hilarious satchel of sour cream squirt, per bite squirt. So iceberg breach in the beautiful agua color. Best, one of the best sodas out. We have a sip. We appreciate the weird nature that is delicious. And we get into these burritos and the deets, the details of this strange conceptual thought that I have about life and death and our existence and non-existence. Okay. I'll just come out and say it. This video is not for the God people, the faith people, the... This is the factual, this is where you come from, this is where you're going. Like, I don't want to hear it in the comments. I don't care about that. Like, that's cool. You do you, boo. Um, this is just, you know, thoughts of mine and the way I potentially see things. Now, this isn't static. This isn't exactly what it's going to be or have to be. This is just a conceptual idea. And uh, I don't mean to say these things to hurt your beliefs. You can believe whatever you want. Just don't force them on me in the comments, okay? That's all I ask. Okay, let's have one dream bite of a sour cream swirl with a hot sauce dab. Make it a little too perfect and then get into these concepts. Okay, I feel like I want to flip it. Here we go. Mm, immediately got a crunchy Frito. Wow. That is something else. Precursor to this conversation. Deja Vu is going to tie into this, but here we go. I'll let you in on my weird little mind. It's going to be really tough to explain, but basically my thinking goes as such. 
imagine a circle, right? Like a, that is like a life bar. You cut it in half. So it's like a fuel tank. Like on this side is life and on this side is non-existence. Not even death or not even pre-life. Just non-existence. Because before you exist, you're in non-existence, right? You're plucked from obscurity of nothingness, of non-consciousness, right? Next thing you know, you're here. You don't know why. Along the way, you get told things to believe. And, you know, if you're gullible or you need your existential safety blanket because you're terrified of being here and leaving here because you don't know what you are and where you come from and where you're going, you cling to ideas. And you need to have them to keep you safe. I get it. Understandable. It's comforting. So let's not call this side of the circle pre-life or death. Let's call it unconsciousness. Non-existence. Other side of the circle is your entire lifespan from entry point to exit point. So... Out vagina, or maybe you were a C-section, <laughs> technicalities, uh, to wherever you die. So it's kind of like a yin-yang, once again, binary, existence, Non-existence, consciousness, unconsciousness. So instead of the concept of like... You come here, you have this one authentic life experience... And then you pass. And the general modalities of thinking are Father, where art thou in cloudy goddesses and virgins and heaven and light? <laughs> and that whole thing. And then there's those who are like, you transcend back to like, your energy self into like interdimensional space and time. Where you're, you're not actually f a physical being. You're just like a, you know, ethereal interdimensional consciousness. And uh, you basically go bouncing around and have multiple physical experiences, 3D physical experiences. And then there's those who are like, your energy just returns to all that is and you're reincorporated time and time again throughout the cosmos for infinity in different various forms. There's that mo modality of thinking. And then there's the atheist thought of just, you don't exist anymore. You're just done. Consciousness over. Bye. Like none of it mattered. Nothing matters. All that. And then there's this way that I've been thinking. And that is what if, if you really think about it, your current existence is infinite and it's like almost looping. And you both simultaneously, like, always exist and never exist. And I know that's going to be hard to grasp, but, like... If right here and right now, you're conscious and aware and awake to the fact that you are, that you exist, 
and then you'd like go into the the blackness the the off switch and you you're, you're just unaware of anything then this right here now is technically always happening if that is a mode of being as well right like if you if you're switched off it's almost like something from nothing so if there's nothing and you be the being here is something then you kind of always are but when you die like you aren't <laughs> and it's been fucking with my head i've been trying to wrap it's like infinity it's like I, i'm trying to wrap my head around it and the other way i've been thinking about it is like imagine if and this is where the deja vu comes in i say this because i've experienced so much deja vu in my life and most recently all the cards and everything that had to fall in line for my like to, to acquire the space that I have now. Um, it was too perfect. Like it's just like almost kismet. And when I got into this space, I was, I remember I was sitting, I was setting up my first rendition of my space, studio space where I was going to film. And I sat and I was like paralyzed with like 30 seconds of just like, I've been here before, I've lived here before, I, this is supposed to be happening, this is the space I was supposed to get, and I was just like, I've lived this before. So that got me thinking of like, imagine if your life is essentially just a Groundhog Day and it just loops of like when you think you when you die when you pass you're back into that technical non-existence but really you're just whoosh, coming right back in the same way you came and you just keep looping but you kind of get erased every time and you come back and you keep and maybe you level up during the next the next loop maybe you become more aware Maybe, uh, you know, each time, I don't know. This is just a trippy thought, more or less, at this point. I'm not, this is not, this is, this is all just speculate, speculative, trippy ideas. This one is really good, by the way. The more simple, basic. Rice and beans. But yeah. I was thinking that because deja vu, I felt like that before. And uh, who's to say it's not possible? Is it likely? I don't know. Is me even existing likely? No. <laughs> so, you know. It's just a weird, I think it's a pretty original thought, but I could be wrong. Other people could have theorized this as well, but I've sat with it a bunch and considered it. And it basically boils down to like, because I've been conscious at some point, and if on the other side of this consciousness is just back to, because none of us remember before we were, right? Right. So technically, the consciousness of being is the only thing that you ever experience as knowing and being. So wouldn't that mean that if on the other side of all this is the unawareness, then this is almost an infinite, conf like, infinite experience? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you, do you get what I'm getting at? I don't know, just trippy thoughts. And mainly I, I, I just theorize and think like this because I fully admit I surrender to the fact 
that I don't know where I came from or where I'm going. I don't pretend to know. I don't pretend to believe that I know. The only thing I know is right now. In this moment, I'm here speaking, eating burritos in front of a camera, talking to a bunch of people. Those are the real facts of my current reality. Beyond that, I know that I don't know anything outside of this right now. And I surrendered to that a long time ago. I've shooken off my existential safety blankets. Because... You know, I will get my answers in, t- in due time. When I inevitably die, as we all will, we, we will have our answers. And I don't think that if, when you die, there is something, you know, greater beyond where you're supposed to get judged... I don't think that thing, whatever it is, it, by the way, not him, even the fact that people consider God a male is so fucking asinine. Uh, I think that if when that, if, if when a judgment comes, I don't think that you can be condemned for just saying, look, man, If you are, which I highly doubt, (laughs) you put me in a giant puzzle, mystery. I just said that I don't know anything. What do you expect from me? I expect faith. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Relax, dude. Chill out. You didn't give me much to go by. I'm an empirical kind of guy. I'm not just going to be duped into believing any any and everything that I'm told. I've already seen too many instances of that in my life where that is not the uh, not a good thing to do in life. So I'm going to trust my gut, trust my mind, trust my intuition. In that, I don't know anything, and we'll see what happens when when it happens. The good thing about that mode of being is that we no longer have to have conflict, drama, and argue about strict, rigid belief systems that certain people try to impose onto other people and make it so there's you know, abrasive energy and divisions and of camps of schools of thought and, um, you know, hatred towards each other and stuff. If we could all just admit that we'll find out when we find out, we could all be free to just be more freely who we are and do things relative to our intuition 
of what makes us happy, what brings us joy and fulfillment. And let's be honest, a lot of that is like animalistic type savage behaviors. Party, sex, drugs, foul language, whatever. That comes with the territory of being a human. We are complex beings. And we have a primal, savage side to us. That's how we ended up where we are. We are the alpha predator on the planet. Life eats life, by the way, if you, just, if you hadn't noticed. For anything to survive, it eats something else. Even gorillas and the strongest things. Yeah, they eat plants, but plants are alive. Plants are a living thing. Now, their sentience might be different than ours, but who's to say it's not more complex? Plant systems in their roots have the most insane telecommunication systems in the planet. So they're just a different form of sentience. And they've been here a, long, a lot longer than us, and they'll, they'll be here a lot long after us. And even right now, me, me uh, making this video, I'm getting eaten alive by microbial shit all over me. Same with you. you are, you're, you're decaying every single day and microbes and little fucking bugs are all, all microscopically all over you, just eating you to death. That's why you decompose and die, right? So... That's another thing, like, life eats life. It's just the fact of the matter. And if you ever observe it in the raw natural wild, it ain't pretty. It's full savage. which I'm sure it was for us back in our primitive days, it was more savage than it is now. Now, it, it is still savage to technically today, just in a different way. People view slaughterhouses and livestock as Some super terrible shit, and I mean, there's an argument there, but we're the alpha predator, and we eat other things, just like other things eat other things. It's just, it's how life is, unfortunately. If you don't want to accept that, then you're going to be battling a hard fight that I don't think you're ever going to win. You're going to live your life probably pretty disturbed, aggravated, and annoyed by that rigid belief system. And you probably won't be able to fully enjoy your experience here. But that's not my place to say what you do with your time here. So if you want to be a uh, agent of change in that space and you really feel like that's your life's calling then go for it do your thing just like i'm going to do my thing and just like everybody else should do their thing too you know just do your thing that's intuitive to you that makes you feel hyped happy stoked with purpose i don't know and do it and let other people do theirs and don't judge
it's hard to be perfect in that category of judgment and non-judgment, but I try my best to just basically, you know, live and let live when it comes to, you know, being fulfilled in what you feel is right for you. So, yeah. I'm uh, perfectly full after the one and a half. These are pretty big, nice and thick. The, uh, the tortillas themselves, even for an XL, seemingly not that big. I've, I think I've seen way bigger ones out in the world. Like in, in restaurants, there's usually like really big ones, but I don't know, even know how to get my hands on those. But yeah, hopefully that was uh, semi-enjoyable. If you could even concede, concede what, I, <laughs> what I was even trying to convey with my just strange yin yang unconscious conscious time loop infinite life thing even i look i understand it in my own mind but it's really difficult to convey i think but maybe you'll get it i don't know anyways <laughs> i'm yammering till the next one you know what to do eat good live well stay true <laughs> uh.